Nia Nia everyone, this is Thermites, and this is Fire Punch, Volume 7. On the cover we have, well, oh boy, what do I call these characters anymore? Uh, like in terms of bodies, we got Agni on one side, Judah on the other. But of course, right now, Agni does not call himself Agni, he is brother. And on the other side, we have Luna, I guess. But I mean, yeah, like, I think it is detrimental to the story to try and break it down to them because like this is a very like dead-eyed like i guess this has to be brother as he is right now because he's dead-eyed his you know like we don't see any fire on him whatsoever he does not have any happiness in his mouth like it is extremely sullen and on this side we have who i like, this isn't really a Luna look, though. Like, Luna has that empty-headed happiness to her. Whereas this does strike me as being more of a, like, Judah look. Though even then, like, Judah has more fear in her heart. She has more anxiety. This is more of a, like, not knowing what she's seeing. Like, there's not a whole lot of emotion to it, but it's not a necessarily sad expression. I mean, it could be the Ice Witch. This definitely, like, especially with the background having this very, like, dull, greenish color to it, it does give me this, like, very hard, this is not going to be a good part of the story energy. Plus, like, up until this point, we've had triplets. We've had uh, three chapters, or, like, three volumes that have all been, like, character face. Then three chapters, or three volumes that have all been character with their fist outs. But we only have two more volumes left. We have seven and eights. So, 7 and 8 could be, like, you know, this again. I don't know with who, though. Like, it could also just be a completely different look. But, I mean, at this point, what characters do we have? <laughs> like, uh, Sun and Nanetto and, like, you know, the, the rest of the Fire Punch cult are out there somewhere. Presumably. Like, they might be dead, but last time we saw them, they were still, you know, existing. Uh, Behemdorg's been destroyed. We've seen what all of the you know, people fleeing from Behemdorg have been doing, like all the refugees and all the like the pirates and whatnot. But there's not really, like apart from that cult, which I assume we're going to be seeing in this volume, since, you know, Brother has said he's going to kill Fire Punch. Like apart from them, there's nowhere else I could really think of for more characters. I'm also curious as to what this means. Like, is this just a like a contrast between the two of them? Is this going to be a they are the same person somehow vibe? Hmm. I'll probably come back to this after we're done the volume. Like, I, I don't think I'm really getting anywhere with this uh, with these bad predictions. <laughs> All right, so in play, theoretically, <laughs> we have Agni, we've got Judah, we have Nanetto and Sun. Okay, so Tenna, who, you know, is the one who said, Doma is my father, Fire Punch took everything away from us, I, you know, I am pregnant with a child I don't want, kill Fire Punch. Hmm. I mean, again, I'm, I don't remember if these are in the Japanese volumes or not, but this is an interesting choice, because it is, like, Agni and Judah, Nanetto and Sun have just been there ever since they were introduced, like, we haven't ever removed them, but they haven't been a part of the story for a while. And then we've got Masked Man, who I don't remember if he's still alive or not. The last time I remember seeing him was when they were, like, a cut, you know, like cutting off Agni's head over and over again to make, like, half-heads do. But, like, every, like, everyone else is important, so maybe we will. I mean, yeah. I guess we have to see them again, because I can't imagine that... I can't imagine that they're not going to go back to that cult. Like, how else do you kill Fire Punch? Hmm. Like, is he just committing suicide here? Because he knows that's not going to work. Ah... Uh... Okay, so that was a genuine attempt. That was him actually trying to kill himself. Hmm. To be fair, actually, I didn't consider it, but this does make sense as a, a thing to actually try now. Because prior to this, like, when he was just on fire, he couldn't control his regeneration at all. Like, it would just automatically keep on reviving him, even if he didn't want it to happen. But ever since, like, this phase of his life, like, he can keep his stump unhealed. He can, like, cause wounds to not heal themselves. So I guess he, theoretically, he could let himself die. But he can't, like, and I guess that is because of this message in the back of his head. Like, the message from Luna. Slash the, um, like, even if it wasn't Luna, it would be Tagata. They both gave him this same imperative of live. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Boy, this is some advanced suffering. Whew. <laughs> That's some real dark comedy. 
It's been so long since I've had food in my stomach that now it can't handle it. That is wild to think of. Like, he can survive on regeneration alone for so long that it's not just a, like, his body's being returned to the way it was. It is a, like, you know, his body is also adapting to existing without food. Ah, oh, God damn. I think I prefer when I was enveloped in anger, pain, madness, and lies. Like, this is such a good sequence. I didn't say anything about this side, but it is, it's so good. Because, like, he's not suited to this. He And he is, like, this is the flip side of what the series has been saying about, you know, religion slash, you know, methods of control being used to deceive others and create fantasy landscapes. Like, this is the flip side of, uh, like, what if that is where you were happiest? Which is a very real problem. Like, it is a, you know, person gets out of cult, and then they go, well, I liked it better when I was back in, and now I 100% can't go back. Like, now Agni doesn't have someone who can lie for him and make up stuff and take the, the weight off of his hands. Now he is the one who has to lie, and he's not good at it, and he has guilt. Like, he's not like Takata. And to be fair, even Takata had, like, guilt over it. Like, to the very end, she was, or, like, he was suffering because of, you know, the many, many falsehoods he had to put up in order to survive in this world, in order for people to, you know, interact with him in a way that he enjoyed, even if it meant, you know, also being interacted with in a way he didn't enjoy. <sighs> so she's still on it. Like, she is still committed to this idea. When it's better, kill Fire Punch. So she probably knows where the cult is. I'm curious to see how they're doing, because also, to be fair, like, they were able to exist the way they did because they were eating Agni's head over and over again. Like, it was an infinite source of food. But without that, I don't know what they have. Like, they have the warriors that are on their side. Like, you know, like that lady and masked man, presumably Batman as well. But, like, are they just robbing places? Are they hunting? Oh, morning sickness. Or, not morning sickness, but yeah. <sighs> Uh, I mean, to be fair, this isn't that much, it's worse, but it isn't that different from when, you know, like, from the start of the series, where he's in developed in Doma's Flames, and he's been told to live, so he has to live, but he hates it, and, like, there's nothing he can do. Like, that decade-long process of him just being on fire and constantly regenerating until he finally gets to the point where his body's adapted to it. Like, this is like that, but just mentally, because I think you could definitely say that him learning how to lie in the last volume is an adaptation. It is him, you know, under all of these stresses, wanting to just have his sister back and finally snapping and saying, all right, I'm going to make you my sister. I am going to make a place where you will be safe. Even if it means that, you know, I have to actually lie and persuade others and create a falsehood. Like, that is still better than living in a shitty reality, Ah, <sighs> Fujimoto's sequential art is so good. Like, I I think in A Chainsaw Man, he definitely does more, like, panel work. Like, not, not that he doesn't do, like, rectangular or square panels in Fire Punch, but I feel like he uses, like, uh, really long rectangles more often in order to give that, like, 16 by 9 or, you know, like, cinematic aspect ratio, like the super wide lens. Whereas in Chainsaw Man, I feel like he definitely aims for a lot more, like, boxy, like, boxy images, but then a lot of them. Or a lot of, like, big two-page spreads. I mean, as if we didn't get a ton of two-page spreads last volume. Hmm. Is she gonna save him? Because, yeah, last time he almost legitimately died for real was with Togata, and Togata was the one who had to, you know, make him go back up. And also, like, she has had this weird preoccupation with going into the water. Is that a death wish, or is it something else? Like, do they have a connection in that respect? Ah, <sighs> always wanted to ask, why, why, why do you tell me to live? You tell me to live, but why? And I assume he is saying this not just to his, you know, his sister who is now here in this, you know, amnesiac, but also to like. At the very least, Tagata as well. Like, to everyone who has repeated this phrase to him. I mean, it's a real... <laughs> it's real rough to try to put it into words that it can't be debated away. <sighs> what else can he do? Like, I can only imagine... Like, the only next step I can think of is to lie to himself. 
to delude himself into thinking that if he goes to the cult and he, you know, kills the worshippers of Fire Punch, that is equivalent to killing Fire Punch. Like, if he can't kill himself, then that's the only other thing you could do. Ah, uh, yeah. It's like his sense of self is degrading. Like, first he lost the ability to taste. Then he lost the ability to emote. Now he's like, and like, that is, you know, we are passing the time with his arms slowly actually growing back. So I think this has to be a, like, like it is a timer. or Yeah, you know, like a metaphorical timer. Like, his body is changing into what it needs to be in order to survive. You know, day by day, yeah. Like, by the time his hand is finally there, he'll also finally have, you know, a thing he can do. He'll finally have a decision. A child was born, but the sea froze over again. So, like, so we're doing a big time skip. Like, this isn't just a, you know, days upon days. This is days upon months upon years. Like, that's a big kid. And what is her view of this? Like, are we going to get her saying at some point, I'm fine, I'm, you know, I'm okay with this. I don't need you to kill Fire Punch. Or has she been saying for this entire time over and over again, you have to kill Fire Punch? My right arm healed, and I've lived for 10 whole days, or 10 whole years since that day. So, okay. So that kid is 10. This is a 10 year time skip. Or, you know, he might be nine. Like, depending on whether we're counting, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess this, like, we're counting from when he went into the ocean. So the kid's probably nine and, you know, nine and change. But jeez. Because also, 10 years, like, that means, first of all, like, if we're going to go to the cults, 10 years is so long. They might just have a different fire punch by this point. Like, there are people, other people with regeneration. They may have just made a different fire punch. I mean, you'd need Domus Flames to do that. But they got to be around here somewhere. Like, they are eternal flames. Slash, you know, it could be someone who just has to constantly light themselves on fire. Not to mention, like, we haven't seen any other factions over the course of this 10-year time skip. So, like, is the Ice Witch still out there? Is there another tree being grown? We we barely touched on the effects of the first tree, honestly. Which I think is fine. Like, I'm not saying this as a, oh, there's so much wasted opportunity. The tree does not matter. But just, like, I'm curious if we leave this encampment, and we might not. Maybe the next, you know, this volume and next volume all take place here. But if we do move, like, the world has to have changed, right? Like, it's going to be utterly alien if he goes out there. I mean, at this rate, Behemdor might just still be around. So, like, they may have just rebuilt. Uh, it had gotten a little warmer just before you were born, but it's cooled down again. Oh, and they named him after the, uh, the twin who died. Hmm. So he has fire abilities as well. Hmm. The question then would be, like... What is his fire ability? Like, is it a, a standard one, or is it Doma's, like, unstoppable flames? Because that would also, like, the, it depends on who his father is, I suppose. Actually, no, 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 it doesn't, no, it doesn't. Like, yeah, she is Doma's daughter. If we mean that as a, if we take that as a literal, like, genetic thing. I was thinking she was an orphan, or, like, you know, she was one of the orphans that he adopted. And that might also be true. If she is genetically Doma's daughter, then he should have the, you know, unstoppable flame. Which, hmm. Like, if we're going to get Fire Punch one more time with the uh, unstoppable flame, he's a pretty strong candidate for someone who could, you know, provide that flame. Slash, you know, if the cult is trying to find another source of the unput out flames, they might kidnap him. Hmm. Also, I kind of just skimmed over it, but yeah, Luna is talking in full sentences now. Hmm. What happens? Like, did he try to die? Or was that just a gnarly accident? I feel like, yeah, I feel like the implication here is that, you know, don't die, and he still, you know, had to give it a try. Or presumably that he may have been trying, like, over and over again. Like, <laughs> he might just keep on doing it every day in hopes that, hey, maybe it'll work this time. Hmm. Ah, do you still remember about Fire Punch? Okay, so I am glad we got this. Like, I am glad that this is a, like, a revisiting. A, like, let's make sure that she still wants to happen. Hmm. What is Luna's take in all of this? Hmm. Like, she's also acclimated so well. Agni's lost so much of himself in order to become this. Like, in order to fit into this quasi-found family over the course of these ten years. Like, he is fundamentally just a different person. I feel like Luna right now has achieved a happy ending, and so the worst possible thing that could happen is that she would, you know, if her memories return. 
if she has this sudden crisis of, oh, this person who I thought was my brother is in fact, you know, someone I absolutely despise. This is also a really cool, like, like without even specifying that it is Eternal Flame. Like, her statement here is just this clear understanding of, you know, what if you can't heal faster than it? Or, you know, what if it is actually capable of killing you for real? I mean, that is the big statement. If he were Fire Punch, she would tell him not to kill anyone. Like, not being Fire Punch is tantamount to killing Fire Punch. Like, if he just does not do it again, then it is as if Fire Punch no longer exists. But there's no catharsis there. That and also, like, it's not as simple as death. I ha like, I do think... My, my thoughts on death have changed quite a lot over the course of my life. But right now I'm at a state of death is, for better or for worse, very easy. Like, it is a permanent solution. And therefore, in a situation like this... Like, it is the easy answer. It is the, like, if he could just die, then there would be no danger of Fire Punch happening again. And it, it's not like it's a split personality or anything. I really appreciate that the series has not made Fire Punch a split personality. It is just him killing. Therefore, like, like it's terrifying to think that he is suffering because of this so very deeply. Because his mindset is, you know, like... He can't promise it. He does feel like he, like, not due to some sort of dark impulse, but just due to life. He can't promise that he won't kill. Is this a flashback? Uh, try acting as the fire punch you imagine. If you do that, the people will see the ideal fire punch through you. I mean, if this was a flashback, we would definitely be seeing, like, Togata saying this. So this can't be that. Son, people will... Oh, he's so big! And, oh, that's right, yeah, because the legs. I didn't even think about that. I assumed these were, like, um... Like, buckets... Er, not buckets. What did I just say? Boots. I, I thought these were just, like, fancy boots of some sort. But the moment I saw Sun, it's like, yeah, obviously. People believe what they want to believe how they want to believe it. So what has the cult decided on? Like, it seems like it is a... You know, he's not literally Fire Punch, but they're going to believe in him as if he is Fire Punch. Like, he does have electric powers as well, which is really interesting. Like, it means that he can't, like, he doesn't have the healing ability, and he doesn't have fire. So he can't, like, emulate either way of how Fire Punch is. Whether it is the, you know, the completely invincible Fire Punch, or whether it is the, you know, burn people alive Fire Punch. He can't do either of those with just electricity. Hmm... Also, I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah, I guess this isn't just the people from the Agnius cults, you know, plus their kids. This is, like, you know, like, the various wandering, like, refugees of Behemdorg have now united under Agniism. And, I mean, I can, I can see where Sun's coming from. Like, we saw where Sun was coming from. It sucked being Behemdorg. <laughs> Those burned to death by Lord Agni go to a peaceful world near the sun, where there's no snow, ha hunger, or madness. All there is are peaceful days in Lord Agni's mercy. <laughs> like, oh, I love it. I love how much it has, like, changed over the course of the series. Like, we started to see, you know, when he was there, like, the speed at which normal feats and just, you know, like, small rumors turned into, like, established parts of the faith. Like, it was so fast. And so I'm glad that over the course of these ten years, it has developed even more. Ah, <sighs> and to be fair, like, yeah, Sun could burn people to death with lightning. Like, it is still a scorching ability. But it is cool that, yeah, he's not saying it as if he is Fire Punch, but he is saying this is Lord Agni's lightning that I'm about to deliver. <sighs> I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty hard to, you know, to die here when you know no one here is on your side. Like, you're not swaying anyone. No one's picking up this fight once you're gone. It is written in the Scriptures of Flame, chapter 25, verse 17. So they have, like, full-on, like, they have a Bible now. <sighs> I can tell also this is obviously a riff on the, uh, the Bible verse that is not a Bible verse. It is just Samuel L. Jackson's thing from, um, oh boy. I can't believe I don't remember the movie name. But yeah, like, I, I get the reference here. Boy, that's, is that lightning? He just disintegrated his head. God damn. Holy crap, son. Oh, son is now lightning kick. But god damn. <sighs> oh wait, that's the that's the ice witch. I didn't it took me a moment to realize what was going on with her eye. But like, is she just chilling here? Does she have her memories? I mean, perhaps she's just waiting for someone to 
you know, to find another person who can turn who, who she can turn into a tree. Yeah. But it feels really weird that she is just, you know, hanging like a person right now. Like after all the time we saw her looking mysterious and being mysterious. When Judah turned into a tree, Agni destroyed Judah, so it failed. But even though it failed for ten years, the worm did the world did warm up a bit. So fair. And that does make sense. Like, regardless of whether she told them about the whole Star Wars plan, at the very, very minimum, like, she can point to the tree and say, hey, at the very least, because of the tree, we have wood, we have, you know, the world warmed up. Like, there's no reason why they shouldn't want her to do it again. Okay, and so they, they, they did, like, consciously come up with the Bible. It isn't like a folk thing stitched together. Ah, oh, this is so interesting. Like, I 100% thought this was a, you know, they lost their way, they don't know what's going on. But no, like, they know that Agni and Judah are living together. Like, they're aware of it. And, you know, despite that, Sun is still trying to put Agni above everyone else. Like, of everyone here, he is the one who believes in him, not just as the deity that they've put together, but as something more. Like, as a genuine savior who deserves to be happy. Ah... <sighs> And he is really strong now. Like, I don't know if the other two could stand up to him if he decides to kill them. And I mean, that is the question. Like, if they do this plan, all they know about Agni, like, Sun at the very least, I think, cares for him as his savior and as a person who he has seen suffer and, you know, like, do a lot in order to help others. Whereas, like, they also know he will absolutely murder everyone here if he freaks out. <laughs> Ah, uh, if they send a Hitman team after him, I could definitely see that being the end of the series. Like, they send a Hitman team after him, they you know, all the girls die, Judah slash uh, Luna slash, uh, you know, is taken. He has to go and fight the cults and, you know, kill all the people who he set up, like, three volumes ago as being really dope in order to get her back. Ah. Uh. Okay, so I think this is supposed to be Masked Man. Yeah, he's the only one not wearing a shirt. Oh, so they do have, like, a mini-boss squad that they can send after him. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. Honestly, I'm more surprised that it took them ten years. I guess, like, I guess it makes sense if for these ten years they've just been, like, keeping the community together. And now they're finally at a point uh, Slash, actually, they may have just thought that maybe the amount of wood created by Judah was enough. <laughs> like, it, it did warm stuff up. Like, now is just the point where the winter's gotten back to normal. Where, you know, it sucks as much as it used to. So I guess it would make sense if it's the combo of they want to consolidate power, they want to, you know, get some people together who could end up fighting Agni, and then on top of that, there was the small possibility that they wouldn't have to do anything. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Oh boy, now how does he handle this? Like, does he just act like he doesn't have his memories? Because to be fair, he's also with someone who knows nothing about his lies. And he's already said Nanetto, so... Ah, uh, he, like, he can't really backtrack and say, I don't know who you are. Okay, and yeah, like, they knew f their location, which makes sense. Like, especially because those, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously they wouldn't know the specifics of what was going on. I also do think it's not unrealistic for her to go to this conclusion. Because they do look identical. That and also, like, she's had time to think over all of this. So, I, yeah, like, it doesn't surprise me that she, she would be able to intuit that immediately. <laughs> Give Judah to me and run away with the others. It's why I'm here today. <sighs> and, like, can he do it? Because he has acclimated to this. Like, I don't think it's that much of a lie to him anymore. I think he, you know, like, he does at the very least consistently think of Judah as being Luna now. Like, that is the name she has gone by for the last ten years. <laughs> okay, so it was Sun. I thought it was the, um, you know, the, the guys who tried to attack the girls at one time. Like, the uh, the kidnappers. I thought maybe they, you know, some of them at some point had, you know, before uh, Agni had killed all of them, maybe some of them had mixed with the Agniists. <sighs> but that's it, like, he has nothing else to live for if, you know, if his Luna is gone. Either save all of humanity or save a single person merely because she looks like your little sister. And he does care about them as well. I mean, he's gonna relapse. There's no doubt about it. Like, it's a selfish reason, but also, like, it's not even a, I need something in order to keep on going. It is a, like, he has tried again and again to not keep on going. He is this perpetual machine that cannot stop. And having Luna around, or, you know, like, being able to say, my sister is here, and that's Luna, and she has a happy life, like, that's all that he can really do to keep himself around. 
I don't think he's going to let them come here, though. I think this is going to be him finally saying, I'm going to go kill Fire Punch. Because that would also be a, like, you know, it's an excuse. It's something he can tell all the girls. It's an explanation for why he's, you know, heading out. <sighs> Luna, what if you're in a house warmed by a fireplace? But when you looked outside, you saw a bunch of people freezing to death, including me, Tenna, and all the others. So this is the, like, do you want to become a tree question. And you could either let in only me or everyone else. In that scenario, who would you let into the house? Hmm. Because everyone's afraid of me. Because the me in that scenario doesn't think twice about killing people. I don't feel any guilt over killing. And I'm not your brother or anything to you. Just a complete stranger. Who would you let into the house? Like, it seems like he's already come to the decision. But he needs to hear it from her. Because I think this does work as a double, like, you know, what would you think about me? But also as a, like, I know who you are. I know you're Judah. Like, if it is a sacrifice between Judah and everyone else, who would it be? Hmm. I'd probably pick you. Why? Ah. Oh. It is the absolute uh, irrational answer. Like, I think especially the statement of, like, you know, I'm not even your brother and everyone would die. Like, he's trying to bait it so hard. He's trying to put down, every, you know, like... <laughs> This isn't putting your thumb on the scales. This is putting your entire body on the scales in order to tilt them. And this is, I mean, the parallel is so strong. Because again, like, Luna was in love with him. And they were brother and sister, as, as much as we know at the very least. But like, ah, oh, like this is the worst possible thing you could say to him. And at the same time, like, it, it is what he needs to hear in order to keep on moving. Like, I can see an ending where he, you know, allows all of humanity to perish, except for the two of them. I don't quite know how we would get there, though. I'm scared, but I still love you. And yeah, like, but Luna, you and I are, like, I don't think he was going to say something like, you know, we're enemies, or, you know, you're not Luna. I think he did, like, he is 100% seeing her as Luna, as his sister. Like, this is, ab I mean, to be fair, the We Can Make a Baby thing is an absolute repeat of Volume 1. Like, they've cycled all the way back then to there. And if that happens, oh, man. Like, we've had a, such a big chunk of the series has been, you know, Agni slash Fire Punch is Doma. Like, Doma showed up out of nowhere, killed everyone he knew and loved, set him on fire, and now he's done the same thing. Like, it's been a cycle. And now we're back to here. And if the cycle is going to keep on moving, I feel like everyone here is going to die. <laughs> like... I feel like the third Doma is going to be Sun. Like, he's going to kick his way in and kill all the girls. <sighs> oh, no. Is her memory... Are her memories coming back? Oh, boy. Wait a minute. Hmm? Are the girls about to come in and kill him? Oh, to be fair, maybe the Agnists, like, approached them and just said, Hey, <laughs> here's the truth. This person's been lying to you, and we won't attack... Or they may have just gone for a... You know, we, you know, we have big, you know, we have, you know, large forces and we won't kill you if you give us the girl. It might be as simple as that. Ah, oh, the sex is in the air. Luna's brother is Agni, right? Right. Because he, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah, of course the kid would just say it. Like, we didn't even get a, you know, a small scene of Agni saying, hey, don't tell your mom about this. Oh, but no, this is even worse than what I thought he can't hide it like this is just a straight up you've been fire punch all this time like there's no upside <sighs> and yeah fair Nanetto. <laughs> like she's always been pragmatic she's she's been no nonsense she knows that you know one day is not going to change anything okay here we go is this a bomb yeah it's a bomb jesus christ jesus christ how did they do this like how did Nanetto plant all of these like, I assumed it was a bomb somewhere, not, like, bombs around the entire compound. What in the hell? Uh, I mean, I'm not too worried about Luna. Like, she's going to be okay. Ah, uh, here he comes. I mean, unless Sun himself is here, I don't think this is going to go... Like, I don't think anyone has a chance. Oh, shit. Also, Masked Man, this is just showing off. There is no tactical reason to make all these cuts. Okay. True, I guess we never did explain before why he was wearing the mask. Plus, like, because he's always nude and he has the mask on, like, 
And now that we know that his face has been burnt, I could see him as definitely a parallel to Agni. Like, it explains why he would have sided with Agniism all that, you know, all that time ago. Like, he saw himself in this new god of sorts. Oh, that is like one letter away from being a snicked. Oh, there's also something so terrifyingly pragmatic about, like, taking just the head of someone who can regenerate. Like, I've seen it in a lot of things, especially a lot of, like, Marvel stuff. But it never strikes me as being any less, you know, inhuman. Whereas, like, if you take someone's whole body, even if you know you don't need the whole body, it is this very clear, like, we're going to treat you like a person. Like, this is all you, as opposed to, I don't care what it takes for you to regenerate, you're going to regenerate, so whatever, it's fine. Oh, oh my god. I am, oh. the visual of him moving this blade through his face and then his face coming off is so insane. Like, we're going to get a close-up of it, right? Ah, uh, no, I thought we were going to get a, like, the entire page was just going to be his, you know, like, his face, but without any skin on it. This is still pretty bad, though, not gonna lie. Also, snap. So it isn't just Blades. Like, Masked Man can, I mean, to be fair, I, I guess it must have, we would have just assumed that he also made the mask. I didn't think about that until now. But okay, so he can bend his blood into whatever he needs it to be. I, le I really like that. Like, that is a clear, up until this point, he's never needed to do this. Like, he can't regenerate or anything, but he's always been capable of, you know, like, he's always been the best when he is naked and uh, cutting. But now this is a final, like, I know how dangerous you are, I'm going to armor myself up. <laughs> In which case, I feel like he's going to be one shot. <laughs> hmm. This feels like a classic, we don't get to see it. This feels like a real, oh boy, did I do that? <laughs> okay, no. Hot damn, okay. I'm legitimately really surprised that it was this even. Oh, he can't do it. I mean, this is the this is also the ultimate, like, even with that, you know, that group of rapists, he still set himself on fire before he fought. Like, it was still a, you know, I am now going to be Fire Punch. I feel like if he executes Masked Man like this, that is a clear, like, I am Fire Punch regardless of whether I'm on fire or not. Like, that's not... You know, the fire is metaphorical. Like, up until this point, he's been able to play away with the idea of it being a separate identity because there is a, like, visual difference. Like, also with him, you know, keeping his arm unhealed for the longest time and then slowly rehealing it. Like, it feels like that was all a psychological way for him to try and distance himself from being Fire Punch while still trying to kill himself in order to kill Fire Punch. Ah. <sighs> I thought I wanted Fire Punch dead, but now, you're Agni now, aren't you? If you kill somebody, you'll go back to being Fire Punch. It's so direct. Like, I'm surprised Tenna also has this vi- like, I mean, to be fair, like, everything she had is also, you know, it's been annihilated. So I can imagine, I can understand why her brain would be a little shaken up now. You don't even get cold, yet you still wear clothes. You no longer have a sense of taste, but you eat food. <sighs> like, the concept of him- always being awake like it was really noticeable with luna where you know she was like hey are you still awake but uh, i think this is really wild like for her to have known like not for all these 10 years but for a long time that he doesn't sleep he just keeps his eyes closed because he doesn't want to mess with anyone because he wants you know to be normal like i can appreciate that it is the struggle of being a fake and yet trying so hard to be the real thing I, I really appreciate that. I could definitely see other characters thinking this is awful and not caring about it at all because, you know, fundamentally, he hasn't killed Fire Punch. And I'm really glad that she does appreciate that. That, yeah, for these past 10 years, there has been no Fire Punch in the world because he has, you know, been fighting this battle on his own without telling anyone. Because he has been fighting the battle of not fighting. <sighs> Like, this is the turning point. If he can live in a world without Luna, then, you know, they, he can just stop killing and he can hang out with, you know, whichever girls are left and they can just make a life for themselves. This is the big turning point. And this also is not a, like, he's trying to save the world. It is the exact opposite. This is the, like, some guys are making a fireplace. In order to do it, they have to use your sister, who is also not your sister. But if they do that, then, you know, the world is saved. Everyone gets to be warm except for you. Or you can take your sister back and then you get to be warm and no one else does. I mean, he's going to make the selfish choice because that is what she said. She said, like, 
against all odds, even if we're not related, even if you are a crazed, you know, murdering lunatic, I would still save you no matter what. Like, he can't push that out of his head. <sighs> Lower your fist already, Agni. Everyone but you wants you to be happy. Okay, and I, I do like this is also a, like, at the very least, like, two of those are, are still alive. We don't know if the, um, the girl who was, you know, one of the twins is still alive. But this is a, like, you know, it's not just you and I. The rest of us are still around. We can still recover from this if you choose to. You can still have the life that you've been trying to live for the past ten years. Like, there is going back here. Hmm. This means you won't forget a promise. It hurts when our two hands bump, right? You can't forget painful memories, so always remember doing this. Hit. Ah. This is the worst pa I feel like he's going to have killed her when he, like, opens his eyes. Like, when the black borders disappear. Because, yeah, he made, you know, not only did he make a promise to Luna, he explained the concept of a promise to her. Which means that he's going to remember what he promised her. Which means he's going to remember what she said she would do in the situation. And, like, that combined with her saying, live and, you know, keep living. Ah. <sighs> he was so close. Like, he had finally given up. And it's so weird to put it that way, but yeah, like, in this specific scenario, in this series, Agni giving up is the only way he could find peace. But he cannot, like, not, he cannot 100% let go. Ah. All these fist bumps. Hmm. Ah. It is also so wild. Like, I can't believe Fujimoto can keep on doing this. Like, we've known these characters for so little, and yet this fist bump montage feels like it has, like, it feels like we're going through the entire series. It feels like this has been built up since chapter one, and it hasn't been. God damn. And also, like, this entire, like, the transition from the fist bumps he had with, you know, like, the other girls to the fist bumps with Luna, which are now just, you know, entirely fist bump after fist bump after promise after promise that he made to her. Like, it is showing visually that she completely outweighs everyone else. If it ever gets warm again, let's travel the world together, okay? Uh, actually, is this from Chapter 1? Like, is this... Like, when the two, like, I, I do remember him looking at her when she, when he was dying, and when she did die. Did they do a fist bump in chapter one? Has this been built up this, since the beginning? Like, everything I said before is still valid, even if they did, because, you know, like, the fist bumps haven't been, like, a major theme of the whole series, but, hmm. I'm the one who killed your father, and I torched your family and loved ones. I'm not Agni. I'm Fire Punch. Ah. So he's trying to go all all in. Like, he's been the villain, and now this is him badly trying to completely be the villain. Like, this is him, like, taking the, you know, the black pill. <laughs> he is trying to recontextualize everything he has done, all the genuine feelings he has felt for these people, as if he has been, you know, evilly enjoying it this whole time. Ah... Uh... And yeah, like, he's still tearing up over it. Like, he can't even convince himself. He's so, a, he's such a bad liar. Uh, is he going to set him on fire? And yeah, like, based on this context, these have to be Doma's flames. Like, these have to be the flames that don't go out. Because he is seeing them as both, you know, himself when he was a kid and also now. Like, this is, it is coming full circle. Uh, also, I do really like this concept of... I also really like the concept of this, that, you know, he has been depersonalizing himself. Like, as a kid, he was depersonalizing himself because he was referred to as Firewood. Because he can't, like, separate himself from his, like, from his purpose, both as Firewood and as, you know, the person who is delivering, you know, who is food for the entire village. Snow is only regarded as white when it's first observed by others, and perceived as cold when it's first touched. Fire is only understood to be red only when it's first looked like by others, and by being touched, it's understood to bring heat and danger. Agni, when others look upon you and touch you, that's when you can be what you are can be understood. So it is the, like, ah. And both sides of him are on fire now. No matter how many, you may have think yourself to be firewood or pork or poultry, in our eyes you're none of these. When we look at you, we're filled with energy. When we touch you, we feel your kindness. You first know who you are by others' assessments of you. Oh, and we're kind to. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. Uh, if we're getting to God in volumes, like in this volume, in the penultimate volume, I feel like we're not going to get any more of him in the final volume. 
But I, I really like this idea that he's known this this whole time. And, you know, he's been trying to... That also completely changes this whole, like, you know, playing house mini arc. Or I guess just arc, considering how long, how much of the series it's been. Like, he has been trying so hard to be nice and to, like, live with people who perceive him as being a good person and a good, normal human being who won't just murder people. And that has been, like, he has been that person. But it has been killing him inside. Like, even if other people perceive you as something, like, you still perceive yourself. You can't run away from your own perception. That is the flaw here. Like, you can't fully say that who other people think you are is who you are. There can be a part of you that you never tell anyone in your entire life, and that can still define who you are. Because you get to define that part of yourself. Ah. <sighs> So no matter what movie Tom Cruise is in, he always looks the same. He's one handsome guy. I even think that when he's not acting, he's probably still just as awesome. But the more you read about him, the weirdest Tom guy turns out to be. That's so... Mm. I didn't even think about that. Like, bringing up Tom Cruise in this aspect. Like, as someone who has founded a cult. And then relating him to, you know, how weird and messed up internally Tom Cruise is. Like, it is perfect. <laughs> And it is such a strong counterpoint. It is the, like, I know how bad he is, and yet I look at him, and I still think he's handsome. And see, Tom's the cool guy on screen he's always been. I think he's a really cool guy in general. Because, yeah, like, you can also put that onto, like, Judah slash uh, Luna. Like, even if you know that she is profoundly, you know, like, she is not a good person. The person that she has been for most of her life has not been good. If you look at her and you see Luna, like, I I can't completely fault Agni for buying into that lie. Like, I can't, I can fault him, but I understand why he would destroy the world in order to save her, even knowing that she is not Luna inside. <sighs> that night in the ocean, when you held me while I was naked, I forgot to tell you, thank you. You felt really warm. Okay, he's back. And this is like classic fire punch this is not even like i thought we were going to get complete head on fire which also makes sense now like like i was able to buy it from the start but i it makes so much more sense now knowing that he can like you know knowing also that these flames are nano machines or whatever they are like knowing that they are like appliances in the air when when you say that, I, I didn't know what to make of it the first time we heard that, but now I am starting to think it is more of a, like, you know, like, these are just things that were built, whatever they are. Like, nanomachines is the easiest way for me to wrap my head around the concept. Like, they're just kind of floating around, and they all do different things, and people are somehow tapping into them, but we don't quite know how. Like, it, it just, it makes sense to me on some level that he, that he can, like, that he has some control over these flames, even if he can't create them or anything. Like, just by being in such close proximity to them over the course of, you know, such a long stretch of his life as he was being burned alive. Like, in addition to his body adapting to being on fire constantly, like, the machines themselves have adapted to setting him on fire. <laughs> ah, if you come near me, I'll kill you. Like, this is the big, yeah, even if you factually know that he is fire punched, it's completely different from whether you see him as that or not. <laughs> he has, like, he's done the transformation. Never use those flames again. They don't go out. Ah, uh, all right. So, I guess he's gone. Like, or rather, you know, he's going to save Luna. Hmm. Ha. Huh. I wonder if she is going to be able to play on Nanetto, because also Nanetto's, like, made a big change. Like, she has gone from victim to, like, victimizer in a sense. Like, victimizer who is part of a system. It's not as, you know, industrial a system as Behemdorg was, but it's still a system where, you know, she is taking someone from a happy life into, you know, a place where she is going to be essentially slaughtered. <sighs> so she might go completely in. Like, I, I think it, it is perfect if we end this with, you know, Luna remembering that she is Judah, it not being a big mind break thing the way I thought it was going to be, and her completely accepting it, and then Agni saving her, slash, you know, like, ruining the world yet again in order to keep her, her by his side. Hmm. Oh, boy. Like, there's no way, considering how Fire Punch works, considering how the series is, wit is written, 
Like in any other series, I would assume this is, you know, like the final volume is going to be the big final fight and he's going to fight a bunch of mini bosses and he's going to fight the final boss who is Sun. But knowing how Fire Punch works, I can't imagine it's going to be that simple of a case. Hmm. I do like the parallel of this, though. Like, she is also trying to tempt Sun by saying, you can, cre- you, know, you can recreate him however you wish. Like, in the same way that Agni got the chance to make the, you know, the sister he always wanted. Sun could make the god he has always wanted. But that's not what he wants. Hmm. Okay, when you light a cigarette, it gives you nicotine. The cigarette is a blessing, but only a blessed can light it and take in the nicotine. So, that makes sense. Like, the blessed are, like, people who, for whatever reason, have the ability to use these appliances in the air. <laughs> Blessings are the love Lord Agni gives those he has chosen. Hmm. All that's left is to give Judah the cigarettes, teach her how to light it, and get her to breathe in the nicotine, and the world will warm up. Hmm. Ah, oh, so Sun is actually really going for it. Like, he might just give up if Agni gets here. Like, we might get an ending where, you know, they convince um, Judah once more that she should become a tree. But Sun and, you know, the Agniists refuse to let her become the tree and they just die. Like, I honestly could see it as being the ending. Like, the, we have a deus ex machina that we could use to save the world, but... Because Agni refuses to let it happen, we aren't going to stand against him. Like, because we do worship him. We are willing to all die just in the eternal winter, eventually, because it's fine. Hmm. You speak as though you can see things on the inside, but you only see things superficially and think you understand everything. Huh. Okay, I know you're losing your ability to use your blessing. That's why you can't kill Judah and have had to watch from the sidelines all this time. I wonder how that... Hmm. Like, I doubt this is a bluff, and I doubt that he's wrong about this. But is this him just cold reading her? Or does he actually have something on the inside track? Like, I I doubt he does. Like, I do think this is legitimately being pushed by his faith in Agni. Hmm. Ah. Okay, she's done. God, I love this sun. Like, I love this direction that sun has gone in. Because it fits so well. Like, I don't I don't have to like fill in anything about him. He was, you know, not a religious fanatic, but he did like love Agni as a person, as this ideal god when he was physically there. I can completely buy that this is how he's gone for the last t- like, you know, for the last 10 years he's allowed other people to deceive the, you know, the crowds at large because he can't do that himself. But now he's finally at the point where he wants to just believe in Agni. Ah <sighs> Okay, Judah lied and robbed this world and Lord Agni of fire. Now is the time for revenge. With the flames of Judah's sentence that will burn on for eternity, let us warm up this world. So what... Like, is this just a we are going to worship Fire Punch? Or does he have... There's no way he has another plan. I feel like he, he... This is just a death cult now. Ah, famous words from Tatsuki Fujimoto. I have two cats. So that is Fire Punch Volume 7. Well then... I can I guess I can interpret this cover a bit better now. Like this is the death of brother. This is him finally accepting that you know what I'm going to be fire punch. Like I have tried for the past 10 years. I think that's also why that scene with him like trying to kill himself with the chainsaw casually in you know in the forest works so well. Like that does tell me immediately that he has been trying every day for the past 10 years to kill himself. Like, he has tried the most that anyone can to kill Fire Punch, and Fire Punch won't die. And I do appreciate that it isn't a, like, there's something supernatural going on. Like, or, you know, there is something supernatural going on, but I am glad that the implication seems to be it is his innate will to live. Slash, you know, him, you know, the words live as interpreted through his sister going through him. Like, it paints a very tragic picture of him as a person. And to, like, contrast that with Judah, who is receptive to this, who has felt guilty this whole time, even if she doesn't fully remember who she is, even if Luna is the person she is now, like, you know, over the course of these ten years. Like, the idea that she still understands that she needs to pay for something, that something is wrong. Like, ah, it's not clean. There's no way that both people on this cover can be happy. There's no way, like, legitimately, I don't know if there's a way for Agni to ever be happy. Like, unless they just both get amnesia. I guess that's actually it. Like, if he gets amnesia, then, you know, this is resolved. But it can't be that easy. The world won't let it be that easy for him. (sighs) 
<laughs> Sorry to end it on such a low note, but I mean, <laughs> the series is also doing exactly that. Boy, I, I do want to specify, though. Sometimes when I watch people, you know, reading or watching something really depressing, I get this vibe that they don't like it. And so I do want to, like, if I'm going to leave you on a note, I do want to say, Fire Punch is incredible. It's so good. I'm really excited to read the final volume. Uh, by the time this volume, Volume 7, comes out on YouTube, I will have already read Volume 8, so it'll just be in editing. <sighs> Thank you so very much for continuing to support the channel. Uh, if you didn't know, I do read Chainsaw Man. All of Part 1 is on the drive or on this channel. Uh, I do read it like along with all of Weekly Shonen Jump, but I do timestamp it. So if you're willing to put in a bit of effort, you can watch all like reactions to Chainsaw Man, all the chapters. It's just, you know, it's a little rough. Sorry about that. I I don't think it's worth it for you to recompile those all into videos, like chunks that are just uh, Chainsaw Man. Because I also go on a lot of tangents that are going to be completely impossible to decipher without the rest of the uh, video. Anyways, thank you all. Bye for now. Nya nya.